Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is some stuff that probably doesn't look too tempting to you, but trust me, the worms are going to love it. It's an assortment of some very moldy elbow macaroni over here in this plastic bag. And over here in this plastic tray is some stuff that had been frozen and was left to thaw for quite a number of days. It was actually kind of forgotten about, I must admit. Left out at room temperature, in fact a little bit over room temperature since it's summertime now. So these carrots and these watermelon rinds have has sort of had a little bit of a head start on the breakdown process. And these are some of the foods that the worms just absolutely, they just love this stuff. I mean, they're going to destroy this food. They're going to just go through this stuff so quickly that, um, that I think it's going to make their little heads spin. So the real question now is, who are the lucky recipients of this delicious worm feast? Well, it's the worms that live right here in these two black tubs, the ones that we refer to as our original red wiggler worms. They've been in these two tubs here now for 71 days, and they're due for feeding number seven after a two-week hiatus. And I'm interested to see how their last feeding came along over the past two weeks since we stuffed their last meal into a couple thick bags before placing them in there. So I'm going to get a glove on, move these two bins up onto the bench, and we're going to get to work. I do remember the food that they got last time stuffed into those bags was a fairly large amount of food. So that's the reason I really didn't want to come back too soon. It's the reason I waited two weeks before coming back to give them today's feeding. The bags were... Huh, okay. I didn't see a top covering newspaper stuck to the plastic that we took off of bin number one, but over here in bin number two, the sheet of top covering newspaper seems to have held up really good for whatever reason. Over here it seems like we also had a top covering sheet of newspaper, but here in bin number one it just got gobbled up. And it just seems to me like there's a lot more moisture over here, so perhaps the plastic covering just wasn't as thorough and um, hanging on to the moisture as well. Over here in bin number two, it's hard to say. You know, I had a couple of um, a couple of napkins over here that I was hoping to also incorporate into the feeding zone as bedding, and maybe that's what we'll do with this top covering piece of newspaper here, is just incorporate it into the feeding zone over in bin number two, and since there's no such newspaper in bin number one, we'll, we'll use these pieces of soiled napkin as the foundational bedding in bin number one. I've also got my prepared bedding, so let's just dive right in. Let's see what happened to the feeding zones. So, I mean, here we're finding the half of a mango seed with some worms nestled inside of it. And I'm not sure if what we just ejected, I think it is, it's still part of the actual seed inside of that husk, or really just the skin of that seed. So they really um, have done away with what was inside the, the seed here that was hacked in half. And then, what else do we have? Okay. I didn't really take the time to review the video from our last check-in with these little guys, so I don't really have all of the details of the last feeding on the tip of my tongue, per se. Let's see, here I believe what we're seeing is, um, this would probably be avocado, because here's a half of an avocado pit. And right away there was a good number of worms hanging out down here, and what else do we have? I'm almost feeling tempted to run upstairs and verify that I'm not misrepresenting which bins these are. I'm fairly certain that the, uh, the food was delivered to these guys in uh, in bags, but maybe I'll, I won't continue repeating that claim since I'm not 100% certain in its accuracy, but I'm fairly sure that that was the case. And there's a few other older food items around here. This is the stem of a pumpkin, and I believe that the worms were fed pumpkin at some point recently and we included the stems. And man, oh man, is the stuff down in here damp, very damp. And, well, I'm not sure what these things are. It looks like the leaves of something. 
It looks to me almost like the leaves of leeks. Also perhaps because I smell something that resembles onion a little bit. But other than um, those couple of slow composting food items such as the husk of a mango seed and the um, I guess this might actually be the inside of an avocado which is sometimes a little bit surprising because you think that avocado is just something that the worms are gonna do away with one two three but it seems to not always be the case and I mean sometimes you hear people talking about not feeding onion to your worm bins but I, I do believe that worms have no problem with onion might take them a little longer to get at this stuff but they'll eventually break it down and maybe that um, is part of the reason these leaves that might be leek might be still sticking around over here and one thing we definitely don't need to add today is moisture I mean those bags that those um, watermelon rinds and carrots were in were full of moisture and I poured all that moisture out thinking that we're not going to need that stuff down here in today's feeding. And I believe I was correct in that. So now we're over in bin number two and not too surprising to find a pumpkin stem in here because we typically try to feed in a fair fashion when we've got sort of brother bins or twin bins or whatever. We've got bins like these that are the same age and are managed the same way. So it is reasonable to expect that we're probably going to find some very similar things and right here I think this is the proof this is the this is the sugar bag so one of the bins bin number one got the flour bag and bin number two must have received the sugar bag because here I can see this is the remains of the domino sugar bag and then we're starting to bump into some of the things that we're already anticipating that we're gonna see that how that husk of a mango seed a good many worms down in the feeding area some leaves of what are probably leeks but I'm not a hundred percent certain and certainly no signs of the bag other than that little scrap that I pulled up off the bottom and that might have only survived because it probably was butted up against the bottom of the container limiting access to the number of worms that could approach it here's the um, the peel of a banana so I'm not sure how that all played out so yeah okay now I'm starting to remember this avocado was actually hacked in half so that half of it went to one system the other half went to the other system and in this case the seed is still kind of connected to the to the vegetable matter here it sort of came apart and the uh, I did I thought I saw the seed I know I saw the seed so it's probably around here somewhere but I really didn't give it a whole lot of attention and various other things but I think we're gonna focus more here on opening up the hole big enough to make room for us to put a nice generous feeding in if we encounter any other larger remnants of the previous feeding we'll just shove them aside so that when we get to rebuilding the feeding zone we can return them down into the hole as well I really would like to make this into a, a feeding that has a good bit of bedding to go hand in hand with that fairly generous amount of yummy carrot and watermelon rind. So I think we've opened up a hole comparable to the size to the one that we opened up in bin number one. Now I believe we're ready to come in here with a nice generous heaping handful or two of bedding for each system onto which we can place today's feeding. Now I've got another type of bedding over here that I like to use often and I've got plenty of it because I just reloaded my supply of it which is the leaves from outside. But I figured we'd start with some of this prepared bedding and uh, let's not forget we also thought about giving this stuff a somewhat more noble purpose than just resting out on the top surface. Here it's going to also go hand in hand with their feeding. So let's get everything in bin number two over here dropped back down into the hole before we come in with today's quote unquote fresh stuff because to call it fresh is definitely um just sort of a <laughs> I don't know probably not the most accurate way to think about what they're getting today 
I mean, even some of these uh, some of these watermelon rinds, I could see are starting to develop some mold on them as well. And you know, I'm even kind of having second thoughts about all that all that pasta. Cause it seems to me like just the watermelon rinds and the uh, carrots would probably be plenty. So I don't want to put too much stuff in here, so much so that I can't even really cover it up properly, but it does almost seem to me like we should be able to pull it off. So you know what, let's first start out with divvying out the melon rind to these two systems fairly first by putting some into each. Leave a little bit in reserve just in case we feel like we've not been fair and we can bring things into balance. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. So then we can proceed with dropping in some of this carrot. This was like a bag of baby carrots. It wasn't even opened. It was still sealed. I had to tear it open to release all of the fluid that had sort of collected in the bag, but I've clearly not drained it all because you could see there's even more sitting in the bottom of this plastic. I mean, the moisture level in these systems is so high that I really am very reluctant to add more. So I think I'm going to skip pouring this in there, or should I? Ugh, I don't know. It's tempting, but I'm thinking maybe not. And I think we've been pretty fair here on the distribution of the food, and the thing that remains is the question about whether or not we want to include include this pasta. I mean, I, I definitely remember the, the bags of food being pretty full, and it does seem to me like the worms were able to do away with it, no problem. So I think we can go generous. Let's not, let's not worry about it. Let's just give it to them. Pasta, pasta I believe is gonna continue to get very moldy down here in the worm bins. And that's just gonna make it all the more tempting for the worms to wanna come by and partake in this delicious feast that we've laid out for them. And I think before we cover up, we can uh, come in with a little bit more of this bedding over here. Those leaves that I made mention of earlier, I think we're gonna apply those leaves in a way that I like to apply the leaves, which is as sort of a top dressing or a top coating. But you know what, before we cover up the food entirely, I also wanted to sprinkle in a little bit of this pulverized eggshell to serve as grit, to go hand in hand with the feeding. And now I think we could backfill, and I think if we backfill in such a way that we sort of aerate and fluff up the materials that are outboard of the feeding areas, it will not only give us a opportunity to inspect the stuff to see how it's doing out there, it will also give us a chance to bring some of it, some of it inboard and cover up the feeding zone with it perhaps even bringing some of the stuff that's really down low and um, extremely moist and damp and like over here these worms seem to be really enjoying something I don't know what but they were sort of mobbing around a little object which seems to be over here in the middle and I don't know what it could be perhaps they've actually done away with it at whatever it was already and it's just sort of the remnants of it that they're slurping up or maybe they're just hanging around because they're enjoying one another's company there. So sorry guys, sorry for disrupting your little worm party. But I think we've managed to cover up the feeding zone pretty thoroughly here in bin number two. Let's move back over to bin number one and see if we could do the same. We've still got that opportunity at the end to use the leafy matter to blanket the entire system and cover everything up even more thoroughly. Man, yeah, these systems are pretty pretty well populated if you ask me. And I think that these worms probably really enjoy the high degree of moisture. And the foods that they got today are definitely juicy stuff, perhaps not so much the pasta. The pasta would have just come in without any significant moisture content. I think for some reason, I mean I didn't really touch this stuff, I just sort of emptied the, the plastic bag and poured it out, but I 
And I don't think that that stuff was dry. I think that stuff was kind of damp, moist. Maybe it was cooked once before and then it was um, thrown in that plastic bag so as to be eventually get consumed as leftovers and then it was just sort of forgotten about. So I think that's the reason they were soft, those noodles. So that'll probably also help in the consumption because if they were just dropped in here dry straight out of the box the way you buy noodles in the store usually then they um they might not have even they might not have even gone anywhere if that had been the case so i think we're at that point where we can bring in our collection of leaves and i did just stock up my box of leaves so it's topped off and all set to go and i thought that perhaps i could even use some of this leafy matter over here to sort of return some of the stuff that's been adhering to my gloves back down into the systems because that's probably better than me just taking it to the sink and rinsing it off over there and sending it down the drain here it just goes right back into the system this way and our collection of castings continues to grow and doesn't get wasted so yeah that was a pretty nice generous application of leaves or at least I thought so in the beginning but after I spread it around it didn't even really cover everything entirely pretty thorough perhaps not as thorough as I thought it would be but adequate if you ask me so why don't we leave it at that I did think about coming back in here with some top covering newspaper the way we left it last time but I don't think it's necessary we're just gonna leave it the way it is here we're just gonna return the plastic top covering bags here so as to keep the moisture in the systems high and maybe we'll keep doing that for another couple check-ins but in most of my systems the plastic bags have been coming off because most of the systems have been able to maintain their nice high moisture levels recently without the help of plastic and I've got a feeling that this system could probably do the same so maybe we'll just go one more round here um, with the plastic coverings and maybe the next time we'll consider removing them and going with something more um, more porous something that breathes a little bit better so I've got a couple things I got to take care of getting cleaned up and put away here but that stuff's boring I'm not going to keep around for that before I go really quick let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now